Hi everyone and welcome to week four of the AdSense 10 challenge. My name is Courtney Richardson and I'm an optimization specialist here on the Google AdSense team. Every day I work with publishers just like you to help better monetize with AdSense. So today I'm really excited to talk about a Google Analytics, um, a product I think a lot of you guys are familiar with, and really talking about how you can use Google Analytics with your AdSense account to really make better decisions about your business and your site. So let's get started. So as we work through today's topic, don't forget that the rest of the week is filled with activities designed to reinforce what you learn here today. If you have any questions along the way, I really encourage you to ask one another in the Learn with Google for Publishers community and bring your questions to office hours on Friday. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be covering today. First, I'll provide a quick introduction to Google Analytics and show you how to get started. Then, we'll discuss how to set up your site goals. From there, we'll walk through how to use analytics to understand and improve your site speed, identify where your traffic is coming from, understand what visitors see and do on your site, and then how visitors leave. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about content experiments and how you can use these to optimize your site. So now, let's get started with our quick introduction to Google Analytics. We launched Google Analytics in 2006, and it is now used by more than 50% of the top 10,000 publishers online. It's a free product that can link both AdSense and AdWords to track a wide variety of site goals and conversions. So before we dive into the details, let's actually go over how to link Google Analytics to your AdSense account. Linking AdSense can really give you valuable information and tools to optimize your ads. As an optimization specialist, I worked with publishers who have grown their revenue by more than 30% just by taking advantage of all the insights that their analytics offers. There's a ton of info here. Hopefully this session will show you how to use some ways to make the most of it. So here's how to do it. First, sign into AdSense using an administrator email or ID. Then, click the link in your AdSense Overview tab, prompting you to link AdSense and Analytics. From there, you'll want to link on the, click on the profile you want to link under Settings, Data Sources. It's important to note, if you plan on linking AdSense to multiple domains, additional code will need to be added. Next, click View Performance in Google Analytics and enter the required information, and you're done. You'll be able to view reports within 24 hours. If you're having any issues linking your accounts, head over to the Analytics Help Center. There's a ton of support resources here to help you get up and running. Now, once you've linked Google Analytics to your AdSense account, you can start creating, customizing, and sharing dashboards that can tell you more about how your site is doing. To view and manage your dashboards, use the Dashboards menu on the left found under the Home tab. Each profile in your Google Analytics account displays a default dashboard that is pre-populated with a few widgets. You can add new widgets to a dashboard by clicking Add to Dashboard at the top of any report or clicking Add Widget to the Dashboard menu. You can also customize and remove any widget on a dashboard, including the default widgets that automatically display in your account. Click the gear icon in the top corner of each widget to see these customization options. Here, you can create up to 20 dashboards, and each dashboard can contain up to 12 widgets. Please note, dashboards are only in the profile and user account in which you created it, but you can use the email and export menu options to share a dashboard with other members of your team. As you'll see, there's a lot here, so be careful not to jot in the data. Always remember to align your analytics configuration with your business goals. So with that, let's jump into your site goals. To set your site goals, there are a lot of questions you can ask yourself. We found it most helpful to focus on these three buckets. One, what do you want your visitors to do? Think, do we currently give our visitors what they want? And how are we different from other sites? Also, what are your business goals? And more specifically, which goals are the most important to you right now? And finally, who are our visitors? 
Once you've identified who your visitors are, you can really start thinking about how you should segment them and whether or not it makes sense to have different goals for different visitor segments. When you ask yourself these questions, take a step back. It's so important to remember that each site is different and your goals may differ depending on what you're trying to achieve. Google Analytics can help you evaluate your site, give them a health check, and clearly define your goals. Each site has a reason for existing and every marketing campaign has an underlying end goal behind it. Once we identify exactly what the purpose is and what your end goals are, we can start to map these goals to conversion actions in Google Analytics. So what are some of the goals you can set for yourself and your site? You can make reading an article, signing up for an email list, posting a comment, or making a purchase a site goal for your users. This can be different for everyone. Once a user completes a goal action, you can consider that a goal conversion or a completed goal. It's important to set these goals and actively try to reach them. For example, for non-e-commerce sites, goal conversions are the primary metric for assessing how well a site fulfills business objectives. I can't emphasize enough how important setting goals are. Take some time to think through this and really align your analytics configuration with these site goals. So now that we've talked a little bit about Google Analytics as a whole and how it can be used, let's actually take a look at some of the things you can do in the interface. I'll start with site speed. So let's take a look at the site speed report. To get to this report, first click the reporting tab in the top orange bar, then select content and then site speed. So as you can see in the slide, you can do a ton with the site speed report. It can help you measure page load time and execution speed and improve user experience. For example, you can understand which landing pages are the slowest, see how page load time varies across geographies, view how quickly images load, or see response time to button clicks. Essentially, the site speed report is really here to help you understand how well your site performs in regard to how quickly users are able to see and interact with content. From there, you can identify areas that need improvement and then track the extent of those improvements. As a side note, our teams here at Google have developed tools that can help you better analyze and optimize your site. We've mentioned it briefly in earlier sessions, but we'll go into it more into more detail during the user experience sessions to come, so stay tuned. Now, let's jump into how to identify where your traffic is actually coming from. This is clearly an important start to understanding your users. So first, keywords. You can find this in the Traffic Sources section and then click Overview. By looking at the Keywords report, like you see on this slide, you'll have a better understanding of what your users are looking for. You can see which keywords are driving the most organic traffic to your site. In this section, you can also see a variety of other ways users are coming to your site. For example, direct, i.e. those who are actually typing in your URL, uh, search engines, and also referral sites. You can also use analytics to better understanding your traffic by geography. So what geos are my visitors coming from? What countries? What cities? You can find this by clicking on audience and then overview and then selecting country or territory at the bottom of the page to see the breakout by countries. You can drill all the way down to the state and city level by clicking onto that country. This information can be extremely helpful when thinking through your monetization strategy. Some publishers I work with, for example, end up finding value on actually geo-targeting their ads based on data. So as you know, mobile is a big priority for both publishers like you and advertisers moving forward. At a minimum, I think it's really helpful to know what percentage of your traffic is coming from mobile. To find this, click Audience, Mobile, and then Overview, and click on the pie chart. This will give you the breakdown of mobile versus desktop traffic. You can then change the drop-down to see how mobile versus desktop traffic compares on different metrics. You can see which devices make up mobile traffic in the devices section, for example. Take some time here to play around with the available data. You can use insights to prioritize your content on mobile optimized sites and also analyze traffic patterns and user behavior to address issues. For example, through analytics, you may see that maybe your mobile time on site is really low or your bounce rates are really high, or that your view visitors view a lot fewer pages on mobile. 
All of this can really help you prioritize your content and design. So next, let's identify what percentage of your traffic is coming from social. Social has a ton of value, and we can actually tell you what it is. Don't rely on guesswork when it comes to making a social media investment. Use analytics to get insights and data that you can actually act on. For example, you can track visitors that social media channels bring to your site, measure the value of those channels by tracking conversions, and also examine how your content is being shared across social networks. Here are a few tips for making the most of your Google Analytics social reports. First, find something you can measure and sprint in that direction. Focus on how separate channels can drive different types of site actions, which can be tied to value you determine. Then, measure success criteria directionally. Benchmarks are uncommon and don't necessarily translate across products, services, or industries. It's really, really important to keep that in mind. Then, create your own social posts with a measurement goal in mind. Be sure to include a call to action to inspire your audience to act. Finally, understand and connect with your audience differently across your different networks. Try not to post the same thing on each platform. Customize and use what works best. Social is a new space for many and can be rather complicated, so I really encourage you to spend some time in your analytics account to see how you can identify and dissect opportunities for each of your businesses. Now, let's take a look at what visitors actually see on your site. What your users actually see is so important. Google Analytics has a really helpful tool for optimizing your site's content called Browser Size Analysis. This is part of the in-page analytics report. You can follow the steps on your screen to find this. As you know, what is actually above the fold in a web page is a significant factor to conversion rates. If visitors have to scroll to see an add to cart button or some other critical element, for example, they may never get around to it. We've created a visualization to help with that. It help lets you quickly determine which portions of your page are visible to which percentage of visitors. To see this more in depth, click Show Presentiles. Now, let's also see what your visitors are actually doing on your site. Obviously, this has a big impact on your actual monetization. In the right rail, click Content, Site Content, then Landing Pages, and select the pie chart icon on the right to see the percentage. Here, you can see where people enter your site and also look for high bounce rates. This is a good top level look at your account. You can also use the visitors flow report to see where visitors go and help focus on the most common journeys. To find the visitors flow report, click reporting, then audience, and then finally select visitors flow. You should see something similar on the, to what you see on the screen now. Once you're on this page, I definitely encourage you to play around with the different options and filters that are available. For example, if you click on all visits in the gray bar at the top, you'll notice that there are a number of segments that you can look at. You can look at the visitor flow for new visitors, returning visitors, referral traffic, etc., and see how these visitors move throughout your site. Additionally, you can see how many pages a user visited after their initial page. For example, if you have a news site, you can see if users read articles in the US and world news, but not any news from articles about politics and entertainment. I think this is really important port, report, especially because it gives you, shows, really shows you that visual path, um, and actually Google Analytics presents it in a really visual way, which I think is great. When I talk to publishers every day, this is often one of the first topics I bring up. If you understand the flow of your user experience through your site, you can really focus your efforts on improving that journey for them and ultimately maximize your revenue. You can also use Google Analytics to see what visitors do on your site. Specifically, there are a number of reports that you can use to analyze engagement. The example on this slide is just one example of a metric to look at. If you click on Audience and then Overview and look at the pages per visit, and average visit duration, which are boxed in red here, you can get a general idea of how engaged your users are. For example, with this information, you can start to answer questions like, do my users look at one page and leave? Or do they browse around and look at many pages? This can obviously have a huge impact on how you're monetizing. 
Additionally, you can also look at how much time users spend in your site. You can do this down to the increments of seconds. Another great aspect you can track with Google Analytics is user loyalty. You can see how much of your audience come back, see how often they come back, and see how long it's been since their last visit. To get this information, first click on Audience, then Overview, and then view the new visitor versus returning visitors pie chart on the right side of the page. This can give you a quick look at the ratio of new to returning users to your site. If this information is interesting to you, you can also dig deeper to other breakdowns that are available in analytics. For example, if you click on demographics, then location in the gray navigation section on the left, you can add advanced segments for new and returning visitors and compare those numbers side by side for each location. You can also see where new users come from and which areas produce the most return visitors. Finally, uh, in-page analytics can allow you to make a visual assessment of how visitors interact with your web pages. To find in-page analytics, go to the reporting tab and then click content and then in-page analytics. This is really one of my favorite tools because it allows you as publishers to navigate the way your users actually navigate your site. It's a great way to step back and think through the mindset and experience of your user. Beginning with your site's homepage, you see that what links visitors click. You can continue to click through, and when a new page is loaded, the corresponding data is shown for that page. This section will really help you answer questions like, are my visitors finding what they're looking for on a page? Are my calls to actions motivating and visible enough? And ultimately, are my visitors seeing the content that I want them to see? So now, to round out the user's journey, let's finally take a look at how visitors leave your site. To understand where visitors are leaving, you'll want to understand your bounce rate. If you're not familiar, bounce rate is defined as a percentage of visitors that leave from a page that they enter the site on without visiting any other pages. To view this report, go to content, site content, landing pages, and check the bounce rate column. I'd recommend monitoring the bounce rate for your top three landing pages. There are a number of reasons why you might have a high bounce rate. For example, visitors might leave your site from the entrance page in response to site design or usability issues. This can clearly identify an area for improvement. In other cases, however, you might see that just certain pages for your site have a high bounce rate for very valid reasons. For example, your users have a specific page bookmark for repeat use. Beyond bounce rate, I'd also recommend taking a look at your exit pages. To view this, go to content, site content, then click Exit Pages. This report is extremely helpful in terms of monetization. As an optimization specialist, I often talk to publishers about what we call monetizing your exit. Using this report, you can identify pages with the highest exit rate and consider using ads to monetize your users. If you think about it, if your user is going to exit your site here either way, why don't you take advantage of that and actually monetize that exit? This can really give you a great revenue uplift if identified properly. But finally, the last thing I like to talk to you guys about is content experiments. This is a great way to wrap together everything we've talked about today. Experiments allow you to test how well different versions of your pages work in getting your visitors to accomplish specific goals. To set up an experiment, click Content and then Experiments. Then within Content Experiments, you can test up to five variations of a page to see which of those drives the most conversions. You can also compare how different web pages perform using a random sample of your visitors, define what percentage of your visitors are included in the experiment, choose which objective you like to test, and also get updates by email about how your experiment is doing. This is a really, really useful tool. I really encourage you guys to take a look at the content experiments and analytics, and we'll talk more about it and exactly how you can explore it when we explore A-B testing and user experience in week eight. So that's it for week four. I really hope this session helps you understand a little bit more about how to make decisions using analytics and how AdSense and analytics can really work together. I really look forward to hearing your questions this week in office hours, um, and thanks for joining us. Bye, guys.